Okay, so in this video, I'm going to derive this expression, which is Snell's law, as a max-min problem. And I, I want to do this as part of my classical mechanics class because we're going to be doing uh, the calculus of variations, and this is kind of related to that, and it gets it's kind of a warm-up. Okay, so it's not really in optics. I'm not really thinking about this in optics. I'm thinking about this in terms of minimizing stuff. Uh, so let me explain the situation here. So I have two different materials. So this could be air, this could be water. And I have a light source right here making light that produce, that comes out of this, and I want to find uh, the, the path for a light to go to point down here. And so it's going to come down here, and it's going to go. And it's going to bend. And the idea is that uh, the apparent speed of light in medium 1 V1 apparent, because actually light does travel at speed of light still. V1 is going to be uh, the speed of light divided by N1, where N1 is the index of refraction. And then V2 equals the speed of light divided by N2. So Fermat's principle says that the path that light takes is such that it is the path of minimum time. So what I want to do is get an expression for time and then use max min and find the minimum time, the path for the minimum time. Um, okay, now I'm, I'm doing this, imagine, I want to make this a function of time with just one variable. So if I start at x1, y1 and I go down to uh, x2, y2, you can imagine that all these paths, assuming it goes in a straight line in these two media, it goes through a point on the interface and I can just move that point along and look at different points points of points, right? So you know I could take this path like that and then that would have a different x value. So I can parameterize this in terms of x. So let me look at this. Uh, I want to find the time, it, the total time from 1 to 2. t is going to be the time along path 1 plus the time along path 2. So let's call this s1 and that S2. S1 is the distance in medium 1. S2 is the distance in medium 2. So the time along path 1 is going to be this distance divided by that velocity. So it's going to be S1 divided by V1. And then the time here is going to be plus S2 divided by V2. And you can picture in your mind that as I move along, vary this point right here, then I do get different values for S1 and S2. V1 and V2 are constant. And then I can write this, I can plug this in I can plug in V1 is this, so I get N1 S1 over C, C is the speed of light, uh, plus N2 S2 over C. That's the time. And that's I want to get that time as a function of X. And then if I get time as a function of X, I can use my maximum problem. Okay, so uh, clearly N1 and C do not depend on X. S1 and S2 do. So if I look at uh, this length S1, I have a right triangle. So the base of that right triangle is X and the height of that triangle is going to be Y1. So I can find an expression for S1. S1 is going to be the hypotenuse, so it's going to be the square root of X squared plus Y1 squared. Now I can do the same thing over here. Uh, this value right there is going to be X2. So this value, and I'm, I'm assuming this is x equals 0 at the right below here. This value, just this side of the triangle, is going to be x2 minus x. And then this side right here is going to be y2. So s2 is going to be the hypotenuse of this triangle. So it's going to be the square root of x2 minus x quantity squared plus y2 squared. It doesn't matter that y2 is negative because I'm squaring it. So if I put that in for t, I get t equals uh, n1 times s1 square root of x squared plus y1 squared over c plus n2 square root of x2 minus x squared plus y2 squared all of that over c. So now I have time as a function of x. And the idea with the max-min problem 
is that if I have, I'm going to go ahead and not even try to do this in one piece of paper. So let's say here is t as a function of x. And it goes something like this. I'm just picking. And this right here would be the minimum time. That's what I want to find. So what's true at that point? Well, the slope is 0. So right here, dt dx is 0. So I want to find the x value where dt dx is equal to 0. Now, it's possible that actually could be maybe up here. There's another point. It could be a maximum. Uh, so you'd have to do something to make sure that actually is the case. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just do it, and let's just see what happens. So I want to take the derivative of this function with respect to x and set it equal to 0, and that's what I'm going to do. So let me just rewrite that function, because um, I'm on a new piece of paper, right? So t as a function of x, just to be clear, n1 over c times, I'm going to write this as x squared plus y1 squared to the 1 half plus n2 over c times x2 minus x squared plus y2 squared to the 1 half. And I wrote it as to the 1 half power because I like to take derivatives that way. So let's take the derivative. So dt dx dx. And you notice everything in here is a, a constant except for x. x2 is the final position. y1 is the initial y position. Those are just constants. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I use the chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of this whole thing. So it's going to be 1 half n1 over c times x squared plus y1 squared. And I have to reduce this by a power of 1 by 1. So I get negative 1 half. Now I have to take the derivative of the inside with respect to x. So the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. And then that the derivative of y1 squared is 0 and the twos are going to cancel. Cancel will be in blue today. Now I can do the same thing for the second term. So I get plus, uh, again, I'm going to take the derivative of this whole term. So the 1 half come down in front. Uh, I get n2 over, I'll write it as 2c. And then I have my expression x2 minus x squared plus y2 squared to the minus 1 half. Now I'll take the derivative of the inside. So that's going to be 2 times this, 2 times x2 minus x. Now I'll take the derivative of the inside of that. So it's going to be 0 and then negative 1. So I get a negative, negative 1. So let's just simplify this sum. And I'm going to put these back to square roots. So let's the, those twos cancel too. Cancel, cancel. OK, so now I get. Um, Let's write this as n1 over c, and then I have x divided by the square root of x squared plus y1 squared minus, right, because I have that minus sign, I'm going to bring it up front, n2 over c, and then I have this x2 minus x over the square root of x2 minus x squared plus y2 squared. And I want to set that, I'm going to put set, equal to 0, because I'm looking for when x, what values for x would make that true. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to add this to both sides. The c's cancel, right? So I get the following. n1x over the square root of x squared plus y1 squared equals n2 x2 minus x over the square root of x2 minus x squared plus y2 squared. Now, this is hard to solve for x, so I'm not going to. Because that's what we do in, when you get stuck with something, you just don't do it. So instead, there's a trick. And I hate tricks, but this one isn't so bad, and it's pretty, pretty easy to see. So let me just draw the the, the path in the material in one. So I know this is x. And I know that this is the square root of x squared plus y1 squared. So if that's the case, then what's this? 
sine of theta, theta 1, sine of theta 1 is going to be opposite over, over hypotenuse. So that's going to be equal to x over the square root of x squared plus y1 squared. And you'll notice right there, what do I have? x divided by the square root of x squared plus y1 squared. So I can replace that with sine theta 1. And the same thing's true over here. If I, if I look at my other triangle, I'm going to try to draw it correctly. It's actually like this. So this is x2 minus x, and this is uh, the square root of x minus x2 minus x squared squared plus y2 squared. So if I take sine of this angle, theta 2, sine of theta 2 is equal to this whole thing. I'm not going to write it. So that means I have this is n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Now let's just double check here because we actually want to make sure we get it right. Here's my points. and I'm just picking an arbitrary point like this. I said this is theta 1. So now if I draw a line through here, a parallel line in the in the y in the same parallel to the y axis, then this angle is theta 1, right? Because I have a, a line intersecting two parallel lines, the opposite. I don't remember what that's called. It's called a thing. And then so now if I do the same thing over here, I have this triangle, this is theta 2. So this is theta 2. So that's my angle of incidence and that's my angle of refraction. And so now that does indeed work. And that's Snell's law. But but I don't want you to think, like I said, I don't want you to think about this optics. Think about this in terms of a minimum, a minimization problem. Uh, and I didn't even show that it's actually the minimum. I said it's a stationary point. It's a it's true where the derivative is equal to zero, which doesn't mean it's a minimum. But that is a minimum. Uh, you can play around with it if you want to see that. Uh, actually, this would be kind of fun to just plot this function, uh, plot this, actually this as a function of, of uh, x and see where it crosses the, the origin. Or you could go up here to this function, this would be fun, and plot this, plot this as a function of x and see where the slope is equal to zero uh, and then see if you get the same thing. Uh, I'm not going to do that because like I said, I'm really here about the, the max min problems because we're going to do the same thing but with not a function but an integral. We're going to minimize an integration and that's what we'll do later.